Hello everyone, welcome back. So before uh, viewing this session, I would like you all to see the sessions on the white matter of cerebrum first, followed by the corpus callosum. Then you have to see the session on the internal capsule, the introduction along with the arrangement of motor fibers. Then you have to see this session. So in this session, we will be dealing with the sensory fibers, how they are arranged within the internal capsule. So sensory fibers means the fibers which are ascending up. That means corticopetal. That means they are reaching to the cortex. So when we talk about the sensory fibers, uh, the ascending fibers, it starts from the periphery and uh, it's, it uh, travels along the spinal cord, then it reaches the cerebral cortex. So mainly uh, there are mainly three types of sensory fibers we usually come across. One is the spinothalamic tract which most of you, uh, all of us are aware. Then you have the posterior column fibers, then you have the spinocerebellar fibers. Among the three, the spinocerebellar fibers usually goes to the cerebellum. So the remaining two, the spinothalamic and the posterior column fibers are mainly projected into the cortex. So when we talk about their projection, they actually start from the periphery and they travel through the dorsal root ganglion and then they rely depending upon the type of fibers. If they are spinothalamic fibers, they will end in the spinal cord and the second order neurons will start from the spinal cord. Uh, if they are posterior column fibers, they will start from the periphery and they will end in the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus of the medulla and the second order neurons start from the medulla. These two important points you have to remember. So that means you have two types of fibers uh, which are actually projected into the cerebral cortex, the sensory fibers, spinothalamic and the other one it is the posterior column. So spinothalamic fibers, it starts from the periphery, the first order neurons ends at the level of spinal cord. And the second order neuron starts from the spinal cord. And whereas the posterior column fibers, they start from the periphery, they ends in the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus at the medulla. Okay. And the second order, second order neurons arise from the medulla. So these two points you have to remember. And finally, what happens is these second order neurons will be ending in the thalamus and from the thalamus another set of neurons arise. So ultimately whether it is spinothalamic or posterior column fibers, uh, the second order neurons are reaching the thalamus and from the thalamus the fibers which are projected to the cerebral cortex are always third order neurons. So the thalamocortical fibers, the fibers projected from the thalamus to the sensory regions of the cerebral cortex. They are known as thalamocortical fibers and they are said to be third order neurons. Now we have we are going to have a look like uh, how the thalamocortical fibers are projected to different parts of the cerebral cortex through internal capsule. Okay, so uh, this is actually a rough uh, view, a schematic representation of the cerebral cortex with the thalamocortical fibers. We call it as thalamic radiations. So you have the anterior thalamic radiations, you have the superior thalamic radiations, you have the posterior thalamic radiations and you have the inferior thalamic radiations. These are the major thalamic radiations which are radiating from the thalamus and which are passing through the internal capsule. So when we talk about these radiations, these are arising from the different nuclei in the thalamus. So I will be dealing with the different types of thalamic, thalamic nuclei in detail but for the time being you have to know, uh, you can just remember the thalamic nuclei as anterior group, then you can divide it as medial group and lateral group and the other parts of the thalamus like medial geniculate body, lateral geniculate body, reticular nuclei and so on. So, for the time being, you just remember that the thalamus is divided into an anterior group of nuclei, the medial group, the lateral group, then you have the other parts like medial and lateral geniculate bodies. So these radiations will be arising from some of these nuclei. And this medial and lateral group are again divided into a dorsal 
uh, group and a ventral group that also you have to keep in mind because you need to know uh, have a rough idea about the thalamic nuclei because we are going to talk about the thalamic radiation so you will be mentioning each thalamic radiation arising from different parts of the thalamus okay so we will be seeing one by one first we will see the anterior thalamic radiation so this is anterior thalamic radiation so uh, it arises from the thalamus and it goes to the cortex so we need to know which part of the thalamus it arises and which part of the cortex it reaches and through which part of the internal capsule that is how we are going to study this from which part of thalamus it is arising to which part of cortex it is going and through which part of the internal capsule so first we will see anterior thalamic radiations it is almost going to the anterior aspect here you have the frontal lobe right so they are arising from the anterior and dorsomedial group of the thalamic nuclei okay anterior and dorsomedial nucleus and wh where is it reaching it is reaching to the frontal lobe and it is going through which part of the internal capsule it is passing through the anterior limb of the internal capsule so anterior thalamic radiation is actually passing through the anterior limb of the internal capsule now let's see superior thalamic radiations you can see the radiations going up as the word implies it is going up superior thalamic radiations so from which part of the thalamus it is actually passing through it is actually arising from the ventral tire ventral tire is actually a group seen in the lateral aspect so it is arising from the ventral tire of the thalamus and where is it going it is going to the frontal and parietal so it is frontal and it is parietal right so it is arising from the ventral tire which is here it's a, which is a group of nuclei seen in the lateral aspect and they are actually projected to the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe and it is belonging to which part of the internal capsule it is passing through the posterior limb the superior is actually passing through the posterior limb of the internal capsule this is how you have to study the radiations the thalamic radiations or the thalamocortical fibers now we will see the third group that is the posterior they are actually moving to the posterior aspect of the cerebral cortex right so from which part of the thalamus it is arising it is arising from the lateral geniculate body you have two geniculate bodies medial and lateral isn't it so it is arising from the lateral geniculate body and where is it going it is actually going to the visual cortex primary visual cortex where is it it is in the occipital lobe hence it is actually going to the posterior aspect so here you can mark the lateral geniculate body it is passing through the uh, to the primary visual cortex which is in the occipital lobe and it is passing through which part of the uh, internal capsule it is passing through the retrolendiform it is actually passing behind the lendiform nucleus isn't it it is passing if you have the lendiform nucleus here it is the occipital cortex is actually behind the lendiform nucleus right so yeah, these fibers the posterior thalamic radiations are passing through the retrolendiform this is the retrolendiform part of the internal capsule it is actually passing to the posterior aspect so uh, most of you would, uh, will have a confusion like whether it is medial or lateral through which the optic radiations are passing actually the radiations which are arising from the geniculate body lateral geniculate body are specially named as optic radiations or geniculo calcarine tract geniculo means lateral geniculate body and calcarine means the calcarine cortex so geniculo calcarine tract so the fibers arising from the lateral geniculate body moving to the primary visual cortex they are known as optic radiation or geniculo calcarine tract so uh, i usually follow the code like l stands for light right so light means it is dealing with the optic radiations m stands for music so music we hear right so it is in seen in relation with the auditory radiations that is how uh, i used to remember because it is a bit confusing which geniculate body is going to which region okay so posterior thalamic radiations 
which part of thalamus it is arising it is arising from the lateral geniculate body where is it projecting into it is projecting into the primary visual cortex which is seen in the posterior aspect that is in the occipital cortex so the occipital cortex is actually lying behind the lentiform nucleus so the part of internal capsule through which these fibers are moving it is the retro lentiform part of the internal capsule now the last one it is the inferior thalamic radiations this group is the inferior thalamic radiations so first thing we have to know from which part of the thalamus which part it is the medial geniculate body so you have the medial geniculate body of thalamus giving rise to the inferior thalamic radiations and where is it going m stands for music right so it is moving to the temporal lobe where you get the primary auditory area okay so it is passing to the medial from the medial geniculate body it is going to the primary auditory area which is in the temporal lobe and through which part of the internal capsule so temporal lobe is actually below the lentiform nucleus so which part of internal capsule is lying below the lentiform nucleus it is the sub lentiform part of the internal capsule so these fibers should pass through the sub lentiform part of the internal capsule so this is how the thalamic radiations are arranged the anterior superior posterior and inferior you have to know all these because if you get a lesion in the anterior limb of internal capsule you have to know it is the fibers going to the frontal lobe affected suppose if you get a lesion in the retro lentiform part then the vision will be affected if the lesion is there in the internal capsule of uh, the sub lentiform part of the internal capsule then there will be hearing loss so in order to understand all these uh, concepts you have to know how the fibers are arranged within the internal capsule so that's all about sensory fibers uh, the arrangement of sensory fibers in the internal capsule in the next session we will be talking about the blood supply of internal capsule thanks for watching